Alphabet shares, what are they? How can I use them in my limited company? Hi, I'm Kimberly Chapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. What are Alphabet shares? Well, Alphabet shares are basically A, B, C, D, I'm not going to go into the whole alphabet here, um, type of shareholding. So in, in essence, you're going to say an A share, a B share, a C share, and they're just a different named share. But in having a different name share, each different share can have a different different shareholder. It can have a different classification. You can do different things with the different shares, which means there are great benefits if you have different shareholders where you may want to be doing different things. Now, ideally, if you're looking at doing this type of structure, you do it when you set up the company. And the reason being, it just means it sets it up nicely. So HMRC are probably not going to ask any questions because this is how it has been set up. If you do it at a later stage, which is completely possible, you may get the odd question of why you've done it. But that's not the end of the world if you're bringing other people in to do different things. One of the benefits of having some sort of alphabetical share is that you can vote different dividends. You can have different proportions of ownership for different shareholdings, and you can kind of make decisions based on different categories, which if you've just got one type of ordinary shareholding, you can't do that type of thing. All you can do is do your dividend and each proportion will get the appropriate proportion. So if we say had 100 shares, um, one was 20% holding, another was 80% holding. If we decided to pay 10,000 dividend, that 10,000 would be split 2,000 shit dividend to one and 8,000 to the other. Now that might not work from their income point of view, but that's legally how you would have to distribute. If, however, you had A shares and B shares, you could vote 2,000 for the A shares, and you could show, vote 5,000 for the B shares. And that is how it can fit very nicely together. So how do you go about changing it if you've already set up your company? Well, this is where you can look at it and go, well, actually, yes, we do want to change it. And how you go about doing this is a share reclassification. Now, I'm not going to dwell on that today, but check out the video about share reclassifications and how you go about doing this on the channel. So as we've said, when you have a A share, B share, C share situation, when you vote a dividend, what you would then do is decide which shareholding is having what dividend. So you could have all of them have the same and say they all have 2,000, or you could say one has 2,000, one has 10, and one has five. And then you do the appropriate dividend paperwork, which is your minutes to document what shares, what dividends have been voted by for each shareholding, and then you do the tax vouchers for each dividend type. So your A shares would have a dividend voucher which would show that the total that's been paid out to those dividends, it, to those shareholders, is 2000 For the B shares, you'd show the paperwork would have the dividends totaling 10000 for those shareholders. And then for the C shares, you'd have the paperwork that would be showing for dividends totaling 5000 for those shareholders. So as you can see, it gives that flexibility and that's one of the ways that is worked really nicely for a lot of our clients, for a lot of individuals out there that I've spoken to who are using this exact model to make slight tweaks to the dividends they're voting and also for future planning with different children and children's spouses and even grandchildren. It's been quite a useful method for generational planning. One opportunity with this type of planning is it helps from an inheritance tax point of view where you want to maybe to bring in other generations into the company, but they're not looking at taking any dividend income out of the company just yet. But they want to be involved in the company now to have that impact and get involved more as they get older. It works great with, I suppose, teenage children as they're getting to the age of 16. And then you've got grandparents who are able to pass things down to the next generation and the generation after them. 
So there's quite a lot of advantages from an inheritance tax point of view to look at this sort of planning. When is the best time to have this sort of structure in place? Now, ideally, the best time would be when you set up the company. However, I appreciate some people already have companies out there and they go, well, can I do it now? And the answer to that is yes, you can. You just need to go through that share reclassification process to tweak the shares and then look at transferring the shares to whoever you're looking at transferring them to. Check out the video on how to transfer ch shares to children, to spouses, to see what the tax consequences are and how to look at doing that in the best possible way. Hopefully today you've discovered what Alphabet shares are, how you can use them in your business and what you need to do to make use of them. If you have any questions, then please do leave a comment and I'd love to share more about this topic. Please like the video and please do subscribe to the channel. Let's make tax less taxing.